Hey YouTube, Meep Magnet here. Welcome to episode 38 of our Feed the Beast Continuing Quick Tips and Tricks. Um, so what I've got going today is, um, this isn't going to be a, a real long episode, but there's a few machines that um, we're going to have to kind of modify a little bit in order to make our lives less of a, a living hell when it comes to materials. Um, and I think first, let's go take a look here. Um, I'm kind of working on some of the stuff to get myself set up with uh, this fusion control computer and then this, this fusion generator. Um, let's take a look at what this costs. These energy flow circuits are expensive, as you can see here. Um, but really, one of the items that is kind of rare and kind of a pain in the ass to get, um, this nichrome stuff isn't bad, these superconductors aren't terrible either. Um, helium, this is kind of a pain in the ass to get, but it comes out of, I think the easiest way to get it is glowstone, and you come up with redstone, sulfur, and helium cells. So, you're going to need a, a quite a number of those. I think it's, 16 is the very minimum. And we can check that, let's take a look quick. Where the hell is that? It's going to be this guy. Yeah, so Better Questing wants 16 fusion coils to make that work. So there's a little bit of work that's got to go into that in order to get these fusion coils set up. So let's take a look at, since the superconductor wasn't all that terrible, you get four of them per. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, these energy flow circuits, you get four of those as well. So those aren't as expensive as they look, but these advanced machine casings are expensive. So this is going to cost emeralds again. If you haven't built the AE2 recipes for these things, um, do it. going to need a whole bunch of advanced electronic circuits as well. So um, this reinforced metal is kind of a pain in the ass to make. But it's not too terrible once you've got the material to do it. So... Um, the one last thing that we wanted to look at here was um, this Iridium Neutron Reflector. Not a big deal, right? Except for the fact that you need this beryllium shit. So the Neutron Reflectors themselves aren't expensive. Um, we're looking at pulverized coal, tin, and then some copper plate. Whoops. Whoops again. But these, these Neutron Reflectors um, require this beryllium. And the only way to get that is to pump it out of enderpearl dust or emeralds. But there's actually a better way to do it. Um, since you should be creating scrap and UU matter anyway, um, there is something called the fluid replicator. And the way this bad boy works, you can see it here, um, it's got an internal tank. Um, and then the way this works is you use RF and then UU matter stick it in this machine and you can duplicate fluids. So what I've got in here is I spent the time to get the ender dust or ender pearl dust. I put it through the machine and we came up with this beryllium. So the way this works is you build the machine out. So a reinforced machine casing, get a block underneath it, leave the leave it hollow. And then the fluid you want to duplicate, you you dump it into the middle of the here. Um, once you've done that, you can go ahead and run this machine. So let's go ahead and see if we can pick up a little bit of UU matter here. Oops. And let's just do 10 because that's what it requires. And we just throw that in there and there it goes. So. It is kind of expensive to run the machine. Uh, the UU matter is a little bit expensive, but to get this beryllium shit, I wouldn't want to sit there and smash ender pearls all day long. Um, it's, there's just no way in hell. But you can see this internal tank fills up. You can pull this out of here. Um, I use a reservoir. And that's it. If it'll actually let me pull the damn thing out of there. I think we have to actually, yeah, actually have to put it into the machine. But there you have it. So there's that. Um, and that's a fluid fluid replicator. So make sure you've got one of those. I don't think I missed any of these other basic machines here. The one thing we probably didn't talk about a whole lot was this chemical reactor. Um, and one of the reasons you need that is to make ender eyes. Um, but that's just blaze powder, ender pearl, and it chemical reacts it into 
Ender eyes. Um, this stuff should be good. We talked about industrial centrifuge a little ways back, as you can see here. We're picking up um, tungsten. We're going to need some of that. Um, let's take a look at our setup over here. Um, as you can see, this has changed a little bit. And the reason it's changed is because um, I've kind of reorganized a little bit. But you can see here, um, we've got a crafter, we've got a processor, we've got item storage, and we've got an auto crafting monitor. So the way this system works is it's relatively the same as what we've got going here. So here's the original um, crafting device or grid for this EFAB. Um, but you can see here, the crafter will actually do this stuff for you. Now, we've got missing ingredients, and that's okay. Um, but just know that you have to have item storage here in order to make this stuff work. Um, so you can set up multiple crafters. And the way this thing works is once it's got a redstone signal, it starts making those. So if you've got a wireless redstone remotes, I could see this, and I, I understand now why these son of a bitches are so damn expensive. Um, like this wireless receiver. This this dish um, these things are, are ridiculously expensive. It's only a bucket, but this is kind of out of the realm of possibility before. So these dishes are expensive. But if you've got these set up, you, you can set the channels on these. And if you were, say, making, you know, say you were making uh, printed calculation circuits, you could set up three different crafting um, crafters here and then just set a channel for calculation circuits, turn it on, and as long as you have the material inside the item storage, these machines will craft it. So once it's crafted, it shows up in the internal storage here, so you'd have to find a way to pull those out, and I'm pretty sure item ducks will do it. Um, but just keep that in mind. This is handy. I wasn't going to do this until later on, but I've discovered that um, since it's a pain in the ass to have to go in here, you go to the crafting grid, and then you throw in 64 silicone, shift start and then wait this thing it doesn't need to do that as long as you've got this recipe set and it's on it'll just keep attempting to make it as long as uh, all the criteria are met so i put a couple stacks of silicone in here and you can see these were all pulled out um but once it was done doing its business um pulled it out and that was it so you can see the ingre ingredients are missing here um and you do have the option to give this a name so we could call this you know uh, printed silicon um, and it will show up right here um, and it kind of tells you what's going on so the, the auto crafting monitor is kind of handy um, kind of shows you what's up so I think you can hook multiples of these into the system um, I haven't played with this a whole lot um, but I just wanted to bring this stuff up because it does make your life a little bit easier um, before whereas I didn't really deem it necessary to have all this shit hooked up and, and put it in um, but since we're getting to that point where a lot of this is repetitive crafting and some of the, the way bigger machines require a stupid amount of material to make work, um, between what AE2 can't do just because of the EFAB recipes, um, the auto crafter is helpful. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, I don't think... I don't think there was any more that we needed to go over for that, other than the fact that we're working towards uh, that that fusion control computer. Um, let's take a look at what that said in better questing here. Um, so the most basic one is seven by one by seven. Um, it's only one high, um, but the largest is fifty-five by five by fifty-five, and I think it's kind of cool. Oh shit! Let's go back here to this. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's some kind of cool, um, like a bragging rights thing here with this large hadron collider. If you set that 55 by uh, by 55 up, I think it uh, you can get pretty pretty crazy with it. Um, but apparently the multi block just sits together, so the smallest is seven seven by one by seven. Um, and it requires 16 fusion coils to get that started up and ready to rock. Um, this stuff, the, the deuterium and the tritium stuff, it should. This isn't all that difficult to create, I don't think. Uh, let's take a look. 
if I could spell. Yeah, so this stuff is just going into industrial centrifuge, and this is just hydrogen cells. So from all the stuff that we've been pulling out um, of the industrial electrolyzer, um, you should have been saving all that hydrogen and, and compressed air and shit. I think I've got it over in this chest over here. Let's go take a look real quick. Yeah, so I've been saving all that shit. Um, so hydrogen cells, you can turn that into this. And in turn... Um, tritium... These cells come out, um, and that's just four of those. So you throw those into the, the fusion control computer, and you have to kickstart with some RF. So that's kind of why I've been building energy cells and stuff like that, just to, to get set up beforehand um, so we can run that void or miner wide open and go from there. So... I think that's it for this episode. I just wanted to cover those two machines really quickly. Uh, so that's the fluid replicator and then the crafting units on the EFAB. So take care of those couple machines if you're looking to make things go a little bit faster. Um, and then uh, I think in the next couple episodes here, we're going to be looking at doing some fusion reactor um, stuff with the uh, fusion control computer and the fusion coils. So until next time.